another episode of Live Feed with your host, Richard Santiago. Live Feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher for your digital resources. Check out TravelingTechTeacher.com. Also brought to you by BullyExposed.com, 501c3 nonprofit organization geared at helping survivors of bullying. So let them help you. Today, my guest host is Laana Hope Douglas. Laana Hope Douglas, guys. She's a model, writer, and all around inspirational, motivational speaker. So we hope to have her on the show today. If you're looking behind me, it's a project I'm working on. So I thought I would put up three shots of the project. Uh, I won't tell you what it is just yet because I'm going to post it. Uh, I'm doing it, the project for someone else, but then I'm going to post a version on our feed for you guys to enjoy as well. So let me uh, let me also say, if you haven't already noticed, right, the crown is back, guys. The symbol that we all use to stand up to our bully, it is back. The crown is back, everybody. So we we will have fun on the first show with the first show with the crown being back and the first show with our guest host uh laana hope douglas and her instagram account is uh hope still stands underscore llc so check her out all right so let me see if i can try and get her on here i hope that we don't have a misunderstanding of dates I mean, not dates, times, because it's really so hard to get um, accumulated, accumulated with the uh, with the times here. So let me see if I can reach out to her. Let's see. I can't seem to find her. That's weird. There she is. Okay. So... Let me tell her we are live, and hopefully she can come in and join us. Uh, Beauty Equipped, thank you for joining us on the show. And there she is. She's here with us now, so let me send her an invitation to come live. And there we'll be here soon. So, yeah, so the crown is back, guys. Working on a project. I got to jump right back on this project. Ah, How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. Good to see you. Good Good to to see see you too. So uh, tell us about yourself. Um, My name is Laanna. I created the brand Hope Still Stands um, a few years ago um, based on my journey from hatred to hope. Um, I was bullied as a little girl because of the color of my skin. Um, told that I was ugly, too dark. Um, girls would jump me, um, beat me up. They would call me Ugly Laanna, Dark Vader. I also dealt with being sexually abused from the age of five to 11 years old, um, which was a really dark time for me. And then um, also dealt with some infertility issues as well. Um, so I just had a lot of things going on, dealt with low self esteem um depression suicidal thoughts so it was just a lot going on but i just thank god that i'm still here um i'm blessed to have a beautiful family my husband who's been by my side through it all through all my struggles of you know finding myself loving myself learning to love my skin um he would always encourage me you know your dark skin is beautiful and i will always question him what do you mean what do you mean i always was told that i was ugly like what and um i just started to really embrace it like wait i am beautiful just the way i am and um then after eight years of infertility god blessed us to have a baby after eight years of surgeries and medications so now i'm a mother of a seven-year-old um we are parents of a seven-year-old she's a blessing to us and um now i'm a model motivational speaker brand ambassador runway model um, just a mentor, I just like to encourage other people and just share my story of, you know, after depression, after ha- after hatred, there is still hope. So, yeah. Wow, and that's a, that's an amazing story. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So much. 
I know to one of your other titles is a writer. Yes. Uh, and thank you, uh, Sukes, for joining us and beautiful equip says, wow. And yeah, yeah, that is an amazing story. Yeah. So um, tell us what, tell us about your writing. What, what? So I, my goal is hopefully to write a book one day, but I have shared my story through writing um, on different publications, different mag magazine publications. Um, I've gone on different radio shows and shared my story. So um, and then if you see my posts, a lot of my posts are always inspirational based. I'm always sharing a part of my testimony, a part of my story, because I know bullying is still happening yeah. today. Um, there's a lot of kids that are going through cyberbullying, um, even though we're, you know, and a lot of the kids are in virtual classes right now, people are still being bullied in different ways. And I want to encourage people to learn to love yourself. Tell yourself that you are enough. Tell yourself that you can make it. Um, you are not alone. Like, I felt like I was the only one born with this complexion, born that looked like this. And it's like, no, there's other people that are dealing with people that are lighter skinned, don't love themselves. People that are heavier, that are smaller. There's, it, there's a variation. Um, maybe it depends on where you come from. Like if you grew up in a poor household, people made fun of your clothes. So there's kids that are still dealing with it today. It's not always about the name brand clothes. You need to love yourself no matter if you shop at the thrift store or if you shop at the, you know, shop at the high end store. Love yourself. You are enough just as you are. That's great. That's great advice. And it's true. It's true. It's a shame how the bully or people can program us to think the way they're thinking about us and yes. that's it should be beautiful awesome summit thank you for joining the show and beautiful beauty equipment says, yes it says i have a bullying even as as adults in the workplace have you mm -hmm. talked with any adults in your motivational speaking about bullying or is it um, most you talk to Yes, I've talked to some women. I, I did a, I spoke at a women's conference earlier this year, actually. It was called Phenomenal Women. And um, I told my story there, the, the whole story, dealing with being bullied, dealing with not loving myself, dealing with suicidal thoughts, infertility, all of that, sexual abuse. And I had women coming up to me that they were in their 60s and 70s crying on my shoulder saying they dealt with the same thing. And it just, you know, like I said, you think it's just you. And when you actually, it's your face with someone else that dealt with the same thing. Um, and they've been carrying that weight for years. Now she's 67, 70 years old. And she's releasing that pain on to me. Letting me know that she can relate. Letting me know that she uh, was inspired by my story. I was blown away. I just, the tears, I just cried. The tears were just streaming down my face. And that's why I say a lot in my posts and I, and I tell people all the time, our platforms are bigger than us. So that's when, when I saw, you know, you're doing the live streams and talking about stopping, stopping bullying and bullying prevention. That's why I reached out to you because it's bigger than us. There's somebody out there that is dealing with pain uh, from someone calling them a name or saying that they were not good enough. And when we tell our testimonies of what we've been through, it helps them. Yeah, it does. And, and then mm -hmm. when you said what you said about the woman hearing you speak and then crying on your yeah. shoulder, you know, that has happened to me too. And um, that's like the greatest feeling in the world. Can you go into mm -hmm. depth about how that, made, how that made you feel? Can you go into depth a little more about it? Sure. I um, was taken back, really. I it just made me cry even the more. But then I started to encourage her. I'm like, I'm, you know, 39 years old, telling someone that's in their 60s or 70s, you can make it, you are beautiful, you're enough. And that's why it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter where you come from. We all have a story to tell. And we all have been through something and that we can relate to. It's a connection. Right. And um, right. when you had the opportunity don't shy away from it. If someone comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I've been through the same thing. I dealt with, you know, not loving myself. 
don't shy away from it. That's your opportunity to help them. Right, exactly. You know, I, that was what I, I felt. Beauty, uh, Beauty Equipped says, wow, decades of pain. That's amazing. The healing that comes from th that release. Yeah, yeah, it is. She continues to say, uh, so inspiring, this conversation right now. Thank you. Oh, Thank great. Thank you. Thank you so That's much. A, um, so do you hope to write a book someday, you said. What what will this book be about? Let's say we're in the future now. What is this book about that you that you wrote? So I feel like um, it would be a two part. It would be two separate books. One would be straight inspiration, just because I am full of so many levels of um, pain of my childhood, pain of overcoming infertility pain of going through being bullied it's it's layers so i want one book to just be straight inspiration just inspiring others you know because that's that's why i'm still here that's why i didn't kill myself those years ago that's why i'm still here so i have to use that to inspire others to motivate others and then the other one would actually be sharing the, the layers of my story um and then prayerfully one day just one dealing with bullying because for even though we're growing up we're getting older the next generation is coming and yeah. with social media and the news and it's uh it's a whole nother layer we didn't have social media when i was a kid we didn't have to worry about cell phones and people videoing you and then you know putting the video out there and then making fun of you we didn't have to worry about that so now it's like a whole nother um you know lane so as we get older, we want to leave something behind to help those that are to come. That's that's a good idea. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Uh, suicide. Uh, was there ever a time that you thought about suicide? And if so, how did you overcome that? Yeah, so when I was in elementary school, um, I started to have the little thoughts, like, especially, you know, you, you would change, the school I was in, you would change periods. So one set of students would change periods and the other students would still be in class. So I would change periods and, or actually I would be in class and the other kids are cha changing school, you know, to go to their next class. And right. they would scream in my classroom while I'm trying to learn, there's ugly Laanna. There's an ugly Laanna in the classroom. And all the kids are laughing. So you're just like, really? Like, I can't even be in class and learn. It's one thing I'm in the hallway or on the playground, but I'm in class learning and you're still making fun of me. Um, I remember when I got to the 12th grade and someone said to me, you know what? You actually are cute. And I was like, I didn't understand. Like, wait, you're the same one that called me ugly. You're the same one that said that I would never amount to anything, that I was too dark. Now you're telling me I'm actually cute. I didn't know how, I didn't understand. I couldn't even take it in. And I just carried this weight of, you're not enough. You'll never be enough. You, you're, and my parents loved me. Family members loved me, my friends. I had some friends, but when you want you just wanted validation from those bullies. Like I wanted that validation. Isn't that a shame that, yeah. Yeah. So that That'd be a good lesson to everyone listening not not to take you know who cares what they say that's yeah. right that's right who cares yeah. what they say so everyone please smash that heart one time so the instagram account is hope still stands underscore yes. lc right and yes. i love what you said because now that i got to know you a little better uh natural uh, Nikki, thank you for joining the show. Now I got to know you a little bit. I know that hope is not just a word. It's also your yes. name. It's so actually my name. That's my middle name. I love, yeah. what you did. I love what you did there. I love when people yes. think deeper than, than what's going on. So that's, that's yes. real good. Yeah. Uh, Beauty Equip says, Want, uh, wanting validation from the wrong people. Yeah. And exactly. it seems like we want validation more from the wrong people than we do from like our moms or our dads or the people that's that- That's right. And that's, that's really right. weird. And it takes a smart person such as yourself to figure out, whoa, wait a minute. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going down exactly. the wrong way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, you're, so I, 
I like your your account uh, for many reasons. One thing uh, that we haven't spoke about is your model. I love mm -hmm. how you play with the camera. Not many people know how to play with the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's really that's really good. So a lot of you guys who want to be models, check out um, Hope Still Standing underscore LLC. Follow her, and uh, she'll show you how to uh, you know. Uh, all of those different moves. Different Just moves. a little bit. <laughs> and, and once, you know, I've, I've, done, I've done shooting, you know, for models and all that. And it's very, it's very hard when you get someone that just gives you that one look all the time and you're like, uh -huh. okay, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do yeah. with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Natural Nikki says, hey, stop bullying. Yes, good, good idea. Yes. Uh, Beauty Equip says, yes, yeah, so good with working with the camera, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I saw your published model is how you call, how you phrase it. That's awesome. What, have you been on anything that maybe I might have seen you on? Uh, any Probably, big... yes. Um, I was on the cover of Full Blue magazine. Um, I have been in Full Blue, Mag Blue magazine multiple times. And um, I've been on websites for Kojo Designs, um, Curve Apparel. So there's been opportunities. I was also on the cover of Afro News, which is a local newspaper here in Baltimore. I've been on Good Morning Washington. So I've modeled on live news, um, news segments. So um, I'm just really grateful for the opportunities. It's like once I started to learn to love myself and embrace myself, God just started opening the doors. So I just, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. Awesome. Jojo, bend your legs. This is your house. Thank you for joining us, Jojo. Uh, so, um, so we haven't talked about, you, know, you just said you're from Baltimore. Was it? Yes. Yeah, the yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, is that where you were born and raised? Is that, uh, where no, I was born, no, I was born in DC. So, DC. but, um, oh. yes. So, but I uh, live in the Baltimore area. My church is in the Baltimore area. Shout out to the line of Tribe of Judah Community Tabernacle. Um, <laughs> my, yeah, I got to shout out my church. My parents are actually my bishop and first lady. So, um, so, but we we feed uh, a lot of the homeless in in Baltimore. With COVID happening, it's just been pretty um, disappointing for us, of course, because we our hearts go out to those that have lost their lives, those that are sick. We are just, you know, really saddened by that. But with COVID, we can't um, feed the homeless. Like we, every Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, we would sacrifice our day and go down to Baltimore and cook for the homeless, go down to um, different areas in Baltimore and feed people. And with COVID, you just can't do that. And we would do it for Christmas. We would serve soup. So, and we give a close away. We're always doing something in the city, but with COVID, we haven't been able to do anything all year. So, um, that's just one of the things that we miss doing. Yeah. Well, I, um, what, what happened with you? Tell us about what happened with you back in March when COVID first hit. Was... Yeah, well, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yes, with COVID first hitting, um, I had actually, I think it was, was it February? I was going to be modeling for Fashion Mermaid. Shout out to Fashion Mermaid. I've been on their website as well. Um, I was supposed to be modeling for their show. It was going to be a really, really big show. Their fashion apparel, um, their workout apparel. So I was really excited about that. So that got canceled. Another opportunity got canceled. And it was just like, wow, all these opportunities being canceled. And then I couldn't go to work. My daughter's school closed down. Like it was just fast it went from oh the schools are going to be closed for two weeks to no it's going to be closed for months right. um and then i started working from home uh, my, my my daytime job working from home and so it was just eye-opening but then you're like you know at first you're frustrated oh my gosh i can't believe we can't go anywhere i can't model i can't do this and that um oh we have to wear these daggone masks and then you think about wait somebody just lost their life Somebody is sitting in the hospital, the frontline workers, the doctors and nurses, those that are sacrificing, um, the housekeepers, the those that, you know, deliver packages, they still have to work. So I'm just grateful that 
me and my family are still here. I, like I said, my heart goes out to those that lost loved ones, but it really puts life in perspective. It really yeah. opens your eyes. Like we need to be more grateful. We really, yeah. you know, with all the political stuff going on, we really need to be mindful of how we treat people, how we treat others. Um, and that goes right back to the bullying prevention. Like this is a real eye opening experience for us all. Um, Literally in October, my husband and I were in Italy. We went to Sorrento, Italy, and that was like the best vacation we've ever been and been to. And then to now not be able to go anywhere and then have this opportunity to do a live stream with you and you're in Italy. So it's <laughs> like you have to look on the brighter side. We're still be, we're still able to connect, even though we're so far away. Thank God for the Yeah. Thank God for this. Uh, the yes. Beauty Equip says amazing work. Praise God. Jojo uh, Jojo says uh, love your hair and makeup. Very, <laughs> Thank you. Very pretty. Thank and you. <laughs> got it. We have, uh, yeah, she says she loves the crown. Yes, the crown is back, guys. The crown is back. <laughs> yes. For those of you that don't know that are joining us, it's a symbol to stay strong and yeah. uh, you know, with, when, it, when dealing with your bully. And I, uh, Beauty Equip seems to agree with you on a lot. She says, true. Um, so Italy, so uh, tell, tell me what you thought about Italy. Loved. Like, um, that was the best vacation. It was so beautiful. Sorrento was gorgeous. We went to Naples as well. Um, just the best vacation we've ever experienced. It was just beautiful. The food was delicious. The atmosphere, yeah. the people. I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah, we just moved out here. So um, we got to eat in some restaurants and then it lockdown came on with currently yeah. on lockdown. Because Italy's doing it right. You know, they, I have to say, they're doing it right. They're yeah. doing a lockdown before. Crazy. There's no need to wait till there are more people die to say, oh, let's lock down now. So mm -hmm. I'm glad. And when it comes to the um, the COVID when it first hit, or I was living like in the South Pacific, uh -huh. uh, on Gu and Guam was once occupied by Japan. So J Japanese people, when you're sick, you put that mask on. It's always been a thing to yes. put a mask on, even COVID. So um, I think because of that, it, it helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in D.C. What's it like growing up in, in D.C.? Oh, it's really nice. Um, since my dad was in the military, we moved around a lot. Oh, okay. So um, D.C. was was really nice. And um, it, you know, it's always going to be a part of me because that's where I was born. Um, for me, when I was born, I was born really, really sick. <clears throat> I was born with one kidney and a liver infection, a liver infection and jaundice. So I started out with you know, going through some things. So DC is always a special place in my heart because that's where I began. Um, and I was able to overcome that because I almost didn't survive as a baby. So uh, oh, um, you know, DC is always special to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So when you, when you were <laughs> bullied kid, did these kids look like you or, or <laughs> like you? That's a good question. People ask me that more now because I, one of my posts I recently did was talking about colorism. You know, I was bullied by Caucasians, by white people, but I also was bullied by my own people, by black people. And I felt like um, it was worse to receive colorism and receive the <laughs> Dark Vader comments. That's why I don't like uh, Star Wars to this day, <laughs> as they say. Because yeah, I was, George Lucas? Yeah, yeah because, Lucas. right, I mean, it's nothing against them, but when Star Wars came out, they started calling me Darth Vader, not Darth Vader, Darth yeah. Vader. And that was Black kids calling me that. So I, I dealt with racism. We lived in North Carolina for a little bit of time, and I dealt with racism. I dealt with, you know, uh, you know, comments about my complexion and about my skin, about my size, my nose. 
But when I received it from black people, it just, you know, it was worse because you would think, yeah. but we look, we look the same almost, right? Like I thought we were, you know, but no, it would be worse. And then they would, when they would team up, you're like, wait, but I thought we were here. Like we're supposed right. to be, you know, supporting each other. Um, so yeah, that's why I talk about racism and colorism because I've uh, learned more and more that some black people dealt with colorism and they're lighter, lighter skin. They receive right. negative comments from darker skin people saying that they thought they were too good because they had lighter skin. So it's, it's layers and it's not just in the black community, you know, you know, Indian and, Native Americans and other nationalities, Chinese, they, they're dealing with the same thing with this colorism thing. So I'm kind of, I don't want to say like, I'm glad that I experienced it this way, but I'm kind of glad because now I can be an advocate for someone else that's dealing with colorism because I know what it felt like. I know what right. it feels like to deal with racism. I know what it feels like to deal with going through being sexually abused. I know what it feels like to go through, you know, infertility issues and going through surgeries. I know what it feels like to have suicidal thoughts, be at your last, you know, hope thinking that you're going to kill yourself. So I know, so sometimes I feel like God gives us certain um, journeys because he knows that we're strong enough to handle it so that we can be um, a testimony for someone else. Right. So I, I kind of look, you know what I mean? You understand, like, you look at it yes. in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're going through it, you don't see it that way. But now that I'm right. on the other side of it, I love who I am. I, I'm, I'm standing flat footed on who I am. That's why it's hope still stands. I'm still here. So now that I can, you know, now that I feel confident in who I am, it's my opportunity to help someone else. Someone else, yeah. And uh, Beauty Equips says Italy is beautiful, one of my favorite places. Been yes. to. Yeah. And Beauty goes on to say, so sad. Uh, colorism is real. Yes, it's yes. worse. She goes on, and a bunch of people are joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Smash that heart because Beauty Equip, let's smash that heart for Beauty Equip, whether you're watching this on the live or recorded version. Uh, because uh, she's asking a lot of, saying a lot of great things. Thank you for that. Thank and Jojo, you. amen. Jojo says amen to something you said. Something you said. <laughs> amen. Amen. So, um, did you, in all this time, because you talked about suicide, and if you mm -hmm. said, answer this, I apologize. Uh, did you have okay. to, did you seek professional help? at the time you know uh for when you were thinking suicidal thoughts or just when you were going through the mess you were going through did you seek any for me um i never went to a professional like psychiatrist or anything like that mine was prayer um my family um my church and really encouraging me um when i dealt with my last um, my lowest, my lowest point was about to actually, I was considering consider, uh, committing suicide. I was in my house. My husband was working night shift. We were dealing with, you know, going through infertility and I already had all the layers of being bullied and sexually abused as a kid. So all that stuff was just inside me, you know, that pain, you know, so I'm, I'm an adult now. And we went to, to do a IVF, in vitro fertilization, to get pregnant. And it was a failed attempt. Like, I was so depressed. Like, what else can happen to me? I, I'm, I already was told that I wasn't good enough. Well, I'm showing, like, uh, my mind is telling me this. And the devil's, like, playing with my mind. You already, you know, knew that you weren't good enough. So, of course, you can't get, uh, your, you know, get pregnant. Of course, you can't give your husband a child. So, I had that, that mindset was still following me. That dark cloud from my childhood was still on me. I thought I healed from it. But going through infertility kind of opened those wounds again, if that makes sense. Because I'm like, I already felt like I wasn't good enough. So, now I'm still going through it. And I was in the kitchen. I'm at home by myself. And I'm literally in the kitchen looking at the, you know, the, the, bo um, the knife board, you know, how the, it's like a wood block with the knives, different sizes. 
and I'm standing over the knives and I'm pulling each one up, seeing which one is sharper, which one is sharp enough to cut my throat. That was like my lowest, like I was ready to give up because I'm like, well, I can't get pregnant. After all I've been through, I still can't get pregnant. Why should I still live? Why am I still here? And so as I'm pulling the knives up to figure out which one's sharp enough to cut my throat, I heard the Lord say to me, hope still stands. I didn't understand what hope meant. Even though my parents named me Laanna Hope, I didn't understand it for myself. What hope meant to me, what meant, what it meant to my life, what it meant for others. So in that moment, I'm like, what do you, what, hope still stands. I don't understand what you're talking about. And I hear your life is worth saving. Your, your life has a purpose. So I put the knives down and I'm like crying. I don't understand what my life has a purpose. What, what does that mean? And so weeks later, as we're going through this depression, because my husband, he didn't show it outwardly, but I knew it, it hurt him that we weren't pregnant. After all those years, seven years of trying to get pregnant, you know, we were both broken. You know, we're seeing other people getting pregnant like that. So it just, you know, we were going through and he said, you know what, let's just love on each other. Let's just celebrate each other. Don't worry about kids right now. And literally within that year, I got pregnant naturally. So that was my turning point. It was just like, naturally I got pregnant and it was like, it was a healing for me. It was a healing. Giving birth to my daughter was healing for me. Like I found my purpose. I found like, wait, if I would have killed myself a year ago, she wouldn't be here. If I would have killed myself, you know, all those years ago, I wouldn't be here talking to you. So that was my lowest, but then I went to my highest within that year. So, and then that's when I created Hope Still Stands. Like with, after, I think she was about three or four years old. Um, my sister says to me, why don't you take care, take pictures of yourself? you're beautiful you you post about other people take pictures of your own self and post it and that was a wait wait remember i'm the ugly girl that's that was still in my mind i'm married a mother but that still was in the back of my mind remember you're ugly remember they said you're too dark remember they said you would never amount to anything and it was like wait a minute oh i can't take pictures of myself i can celebrate me so that was like a light bulb went off. Like, wait, no, you're not ugly. You are enough. You are beautiful. You are able. So I created Hope Still Stands, and now the rest is history. So. Wow, that's <laughs> great. That's very. Sorry, says uh, Beauty Quipped, um, and JoJo says she made it. Yes, she made it. Guys. Yes. So yeah. Uh, when was it? Uh, a couple of days ago, we did a story about a woman who basically said that women can't be president uh, because they're too emotional. So as a oh. woman, I want to get I want to get your thoughts about women being president, about uh, <laughs> have the whole nine. Preach to us. Talk to us. What are your Look. thoughts about that? Look, OK, so women being emotional is not a bad thing because we see things i'm not saying men don't but we see things sometimes in a bigger picture our emotions may drive us now sometimes it may be a bad thing but a lot of times it's a good thing our emotions are going to drive us so that we can be better leaders that we can be better supporters that we can comfort others we can be relatable um, it's not always about being harsh and pushing people away. Sometimes we have to draw people in. So women can be great presidents and vice presidents and leaders and own their own businesses and be bosses. We can do it with our emotions, with our strengths, with our, you know, our brains. We can do it. It's not about what we look like. It's what we can bring to the table. So us being emotional is not a bad thing. My emotions... Me have, being an emotional person has inspired others. Me being able to share layers of my testimony has helped someone else. It saved someone else's life. So being emotional is not a bad thing. Now you have to, it's good to be emotional in a, a certain place. 
It's not, you know, we don't always have to be crying and, oh my gosh, no. But we can be relatable and inspire others and encourage other people because we have been through something. So, yeah, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, when it comes to the, you know, people saying that women are too emotional, I think men and women are just as emotional. They have the same yes. Emotion, but men show anger, women show <laughs> other emotions, and, and, and society says anger it's okay to show, uh, which is right. not. That's why women uh, get the, the flack for being more emotional. Mm -hmm. Every war that's ever started, I don't think it has been started by a woman, it's all been started by men. So, yes. uh, and Beauty says, who said that? Well, Beauty, you're going to have to go to our show entitled uh, Women Can't Be President. They're Too Emotional. That's the title of the show. Check it out on <laughs> the TV channel. We're not saying we agree with it. That's just the title of the show. Okay. But, um, yeah. So when it comes to modeling, I have a yeah. lot of uh, young kids on my channel who want to be models. Uh, they tell me they tell me that um, what advice can you give them when it comes to building up your self esteem and even when it comes to maybe like a trick that you do again don't give all your secrets away but maybe yeah. you can give <laughs> a tiny one of you know what you do uh, to prep maybe to get ready for it and thank you for everyone joining us if I didn't say your name I'm I'm sorry it, uh, let's see preachers kids thank you. And Maya, designer, thank you for joining. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. What, uh, how do you build uh, yourself? So how I build myself up is just, Lana, you're you're good enough to do this. You got this. Like I am. Um, now that I've been modeling for so many years, when someone asks me, "Hey, do you want to be a part of our show?" Sure. It's not like, oh my gosh, what do you think? Oh, I'm not, I'm bigger because most times I'm bigger than most of the models there. I'm the oldest one there. I'm maybe the darkest one there. Or I. We lost your sound. My um, someone was calling. Um, that's okay. It's like you are chosen for a reason that's for anything not just modeling that's for any job interview any opportunity you're chosen for a reason so don't ever doubt yourself don't ever put yourself down don't worry about what the bullies have said in the past that's mm -mm. that's dust off your feet that right. mm -mm. don't worry about that you are enough just as you are so take this opportunity when i walk the runway I'm always thinking of my husband at the end of the runway. So when I'm going, I'm like, no, that's my husband there. And so I'm walking with confidence because he loves me. So that's yeah. what I do. So think of someone like your mother, your sister, someone that loves you, that um, will support you no matter what. Think of them at the end of the runway. And or that's one thing. Or find someone in the audience that as soon as you walk out there smiling, keep your eye on them because they're gonna give you more energy. If someone's looking at you like, uh, no, no, that's all right. Look at the one that's smiling, that's giving you some positive you know, energy, look at them. And then when it comes to just getting an opportunity, if someone asks you to be a part of their photo shoot or magazine cover, just go out and do it. Life is too short to miss an opportunity. Life is too short to give up on yourself. So definitely push yourself, encourage yourself to do it. And if you need to find a circle of friends that you know that you can trust, that can encourage you, always confide in them. Let them know, hey, I have an opportunity coming up. Can you just give me a little bit of encouragement? It doesn't hurt to get encouraged every once in a while. It doesn't hurt. That's awesome. That, I love that advice. That's real good advice. Thank you. It's real, real good. Yeah. And if you're right. If you see someone you um when i was working my way through college i used to work uh, mm -hmm. for a credit card company you know working on the phones mm -hmm. and they gave us all mirrors and i thought it was a good advice yes all, see yourself smiling that smile comes out of your call and i, yes. and I thought when you said think of that person uh that you love at the end of the runway and you're going to them with pride yeah good 
Uh, thank you again for everyone joining us, Aida. Thank you for joining us. And equ uh, Beauty Equip says, uh, chosen for a reason in quotations. Yes. She loves it. She loves that. Yes, thank we all you. We all have, you know, for me, I always tell people we all have a story to tell. It's just yeah. the way we, it's That's what's exactly up. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have, we have not talked and I apologize. We haven't talked about your website. Do you have a website uh, people I can send people to? Yes. I don't have a website right now. I had one, but I ended up closing it because um, it was just with, with COVID and everything going on. So I just been focusing on my social media um, okay. but definitely send them to my Instagram, my Facebook page. I'm also on Facebook. I hope still stands underscore LC. And, um, if they want to send me an email, anyone or a DM that just needs some encouragement. Hi, thank you. Anyone that needs any encouragement or support. Um, I get DMs all the time, um, or private messages just saying, you know, you inspired me today. Your post inspired me. Um, I just, it just makes me feel good because like I said, our platforms are bigger than us. So if anyone just wants to shoot me a DM and just says, Hey, Lynn, I just want to talk to you. I'm going through something. I don't mind. Um, even if I don't get back to you right away, I'm definitely going to do my best to, to help you. That's why we're here. We, we're supposed to help others. So yes, please reach out to me on hope still stands underscore LC. All right. Yeah. Great. So follow her guys. Uh, and Thank I just said, for uh, a great spirit, yes. Thank you. you know, <laughs> Thank you. Even through the camera, you can tell that. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything that I did not mention that you would like to mention at this time? Um, just for anyone dealing with bullying right now, even though you may not be in school, there may be some some things that you're still hurting from. Um, not loving yourself, not loving your skin. Um, maybe within your family, maybe you have a family member that's t making fun of you. Maybe you have someone that is always putting you down. I just want to encourage you to never give up. And I know it's, especially during this time, it seems like it, this will never end with COVID. So that's like another layer of sadness on some, pe on some people's mind. Um, I just want to encourage you to love yourself. Look in the mirror every day. I, I do that sometimes. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, Leanna, your eyes are beautiful. Leanna, you have a beautiful smile. Tell yourself, well, whoever you are, tell yourself, you know what? I am beautiful. I am handsome. I am strong. Um, even if my hair is straight, kinky, whatever it is, I am beautiful just the way I am. I don't have to try to compete with anyone. I used to um, want to be lighter skinned. I used to want to, um, I remember one time when I was a kid, I poured baby powder all over me and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm light skinned now. I was just, because I wanted to be someone else. I wanted to have lighter eyes. No, these eyes are, you know, for me. They're for the vision that I have. They're, they're for my future. They're for my destiny. Th these eyes are meant for me. Same thing for you. This smile is meant for me, but it doesn't discount your smile. Right. We should embrace each other. It's not putting someone else's down, someone, somebody else's light down. It's like, no, I'm embracing myself, but I'm also going to also strengthen you. I'm going to encourage you. So even when you're lifting yourself up, look yourself in the mirror and say you're good enough. When you see someone else, tell them that they're good enough too. So right. it's, it's a domino effect. So that's my last thing, I guess, that I can say. <laughs> <laughs> that's great advice. Definitely. Thank you so very much for being on the show. I really appreciate it being my guest host. Again, guys, it's uh, Hope Still Stands underscore LLC on Instagram and Facebook, right? Are yes. You, are you on Twitter as well? I'm on Twitter as well. Leanna oh, Still Hopes. Leanna Still Hopes on Twitter. All right. I'll check you out there. All right. Well, thank, thank you for that uh, was on the show, especially JoJo and beauty equipped uh thank you for the great words if i missed you i apologize but thank you so much we do this every day guys and uh sometimes you might come on we might have someone that can inspire you just like miss Anna did thank you so much miss thank you Wish thank you lots of luck in the future and i can't wait to see more of those awesome um uh, 
modeling videos you put up. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so live feed is brought to you by Traveling Tech Teacher. For all your digital resources, check out TravelingTechTeacher.com and also brought to you by TheBullyExposed.com. 501c3 nonprofit organization geared at helping survivors of bullying. So let us help you. All right, guys? Remember, anyone can wear the crown. Anyone can be a hero. Be kind to one another and have a great day. Bye, Leah. Bye. <laughs>